Good morning and happy Sabbath, early teen class. Welcome to another lesson this week from Daughter of Zion Seventh-day Adventist Church. Our lesson is entitled Unspected Faith, and it can be found in the book of Luke, chapter 7, verses 1 through 10. Let's pray. Good morning, Jesus, and happy Sabbath. Thank you so much for waking us up this morning, allowing us to see a new day. Now, Lord, as we study your word, open up our minds and our hearts that we may understand, hear, and be receptive to your will and your way. Father, we ask that you will bless every person um, under the sound of my voice and bless those that are on their way or who will watch it being streamed later. In your name we do pray. Amen. All right, I hope you enjoyed the convocation last week, and that's why we were not together. But we continue with our power text, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. And that can be found in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 2. And our PowerPoint, it's very powerful today. It says, as our faith develops, so does our ability to serve. Now, I'm sure you've heard of the trust fall experiment. If you haven't, you're in for a treat today. The trust fall experiment, I want you to watch this video and you know that a trust fall is going to be about trusting others in a group. So one person stands with their back to the others and they close their eyes, bend their knees, and the ones in the back are ready to catch him. Let's just watch this and see what happens. Now, as we watch it, you're going to notice the person, you're probably going to have your um, eyes on the person who is going to be falling back. And I want you to think about someone doing this for you. Would you trust them doing this for you? Do you think you would feel like you can fall back with just anybody and trust them to catch you? How do you think it would be feel to be there to catch one that person? How did how would you know that you were even trusting yourself to catch them? And then why would you recommend to someone else to trust you or to catch them? Okay? And of course it'll depend on some experiences that you've had. Okay, and so if someone else um, needed a safe place to fall, anybody that you know of, how would you lead them to trust, to go to God? Well, we have to encourage them to realize that when we have faith in God and in our community of believers, we can serve others by leading them in turn to have faith as well. So our power text basically said that Jesus, he endured the cross, he despised the shame, and as he sat down at the right hand or the throne of God, he basically was trusting God to be in control of his life. So as we move on, now let's get into our story. When have you asked for something on someone else's behalf? Have you ever saved someone's life? Your life may have a greater impact on others' lives than you may think. So let's discover how in this story, an unbeliever's faith saved a friend's life. An officer of the Roman army went to seek help from the Jewish leaders. The centurion explained to them that his servant was very sick with the palsy. 
Respectfully, he asked the Jewish, Jewish leaders to carry his message to Jesus and plead with the master for the healing of his servant. Unlike some Roman soldiers, this centurion didn't treat his servants cruelly. In fact, the servant had become like a family member and the centurion was saddened at the thought that his servant might die. The Jewish leaders promised to help the centurion by carrying his message to Jesus, and they hurried off to look for him. When they found Jesus, they begged him earnestly to help this man, saying, For he loves our nation and has built us a synagogue. And that can be found in Luke chapter 7, verses 4 and 5. Well, right away, young people, Jesus' heart was touched. Whenever he heard that someone was sick or in need, his automatic response was to help. Unlike the Jews, he didn't want to help the man because of who he was or what he had done. He wanted to help not because the man deserved help, but because the man recognized his need for help. Young people, do you recognize your need for help? And do you ask, do you go to God and ask him to help you to ask? All right, back to our story. Well, immediately, Jesus set out for the officer's home. Slowly, he made his way on foot through the dense crowd. But Jesus hadn't gotten very far when the Roman officer's message came to him. Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Therefore, I don't even think myself worthy to come to you. Young people, this man had been watching and listening to Jesus for a long time. He had heard time and again stories of Jesus' healing power and love. He recognized in Jesus something that even the Jews had failed to see. The centurion found in Jesus' teaching the answer that could satisfy the deepest need of his soul. He knew that Jesus was no ordinary man, and he didn't even feel worthy of a visit from him. Nonetheless, the centurion's humble, message didn't stop Jesus. He just kept on going, heading straight for the officer's house. Jesus had one purpose in mind, to bless others through his unconditional and loving service. Whenever he went, wherever he went, sorry, he brought life, healing, and joy, and today would be no exception. Before he could reach his destination, the Roman officer came and finished his message to Jesus himself. And boys and young people, look at what this message is. He said, just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I am a man placed under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to one, go. And he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard the centurion's words, again, he was amazed. Turning to the crowd, he said, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. When the Roman soldier returned home, he found that, just as Jesus had promised, his servant was indeed healed, completely well, and ready to continue his work. There must have been many shouts of joy at the centurion's house that day. Because of that Roman officer's faith, his servant was blessed with the healing touch of Jesus. Isn't that wonderful, young people? Over and over through the years, as long as this story is told, 
People will learn of the blessings available to each one who comes to Jesus with simple faith, believing in his power to restore human lives. So I hope your faith is strong like that too, young people. Just as Jesus honored the faith of the centurion and healed his servant, God will also honor our faith in him. Young people, we each have received the measure of faith through the Holy Spirit's working in our lives. It is a privilege to use our faith as the centurion did to connect people with Jesus, the true source of healing and restoration. Now, young people, can you imagine the difference we can make in the lives of others if we place our faith in Jesus at the, as the centurion did? So today's lesson is very important for us. It's a lesson about service. In a community of believers, our faith in Jesus just grows. And then we become equipped and then we're compelled to share our faith in loving acts of service and blessings to others. So today, young people, the message is loud and clear. Get that unexpected faith from Christ only who can give it. Trust him. Fall into his arms. Fall into his life. And I guarantee you, you will see unexpected miracles and blessings happening in your life. Lean on him. He's there for us to catch us when we fall and to hold us and rock us in his arms. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, for this story. Lord, we want to have the faith of the Roman official that you met long ago. Please, Father, give us opportunities for our faith to grow so that we can do greater things for you. Bless us throughout the rest of this day. Increase our faith, forgive us of our sins, and help our unbelief, Father. These things we pray in your precious and holy name. Amen. All right, young people, I hope that you are sharing these videos with others. And I'm happy to announce that we have a new lesson as well, the Cornerstone Group. So if you know anyone who is age 16 to 20 or even 16 and up, they can also enjoy this story. And you can watch all of them if you want, from Beginners by uh, Keandra Walden, Kindergarten by Principal Wainwright, Primary Sabbath School Lesson by Dr. Kalisha Walden. Here we have the early teen class, and then our Cornerstone Lesson will be given by Mrs. Carrie Ann Dixon. So we want to continue to minister because we want you to be prepared for Jesus by studying his word with us each week and then studying on your own. I hope you have a blessed day and that you will continue to learn about God. Bye-bye. See you next week.